The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 138. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Welcome back to the EL. Today we have John Gordon, who's actually a repeat guest. Uh, last time he was on, he actually talked about his brand new book at the time, The Carpenter, which has done phenomenal uh, since he last came on. I think that book came out maybe in May of 2014. And now we're here to discuss uh, his most popular book, as he'll discuss here in just a minute, but uh, The Energy Bus, which came out back in 2007, but is still doing phenomenal. Um, and and I love the fact that we get to bring John on because so many times on this show, we, we talk about uh, more the textbook type books and not so much a a story. And so I love being able to pull him on. Um, when we do have someone that 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 has a story book, it's a little bit shorter. Obviously, they can't give away their whole book in a you know in a fifteen minute uh, review of it. So this this interview is short, but it's sweet, straight to the point. John does a fantastic job uh, of talking about what you can expect out of it. So without further ado, let's bring him on. Welcome back, John, and thank you for joining us once again on the Entrepreneur's Library. Well, thanks for having me. We take just a moment for those of you that didn't, uh, for our audience that did not get to hear you talk about uh, The Carpenter and introduce yourself. Tell us just a little bit about you personally. Well, my name is John Gordon. I'm a writer and speaker. I consider myself a writer first. I love writing, you know, fables that inspire and encourage people. I've written The Energy Bus, Training Camp, Seed, The Soup, and uh, my latest one is, is The Carpenter. Uh, a lot of people say it's my, my best book. Uh, but a lot of people just have their different favorite ones. <laughs> my husband, a father, two teenagers, crazy teenagers, tough times, <laughs> crazy years, but also great times. Love my kids. And uh, and uh, just I write, I speak, and I spend time with my family. Excellent. So first off, thank you for sharing that. Now let's jump right into uh, – to, it's not your latest because we already covered The Carpenter, but uh, – one of the one of your biggest hits, right? Is I think you were telling me last time, the energy bus: ten rules to fuel your life, work, and team with positive energy. And John, correct me if I'm wrong, but was that first made available back in January 2007? Yes, I mean that's the wild thing. It was written in 2007. It wasn't very popular then, but like any entrepreneur, entrepreneur, right? You have to believe, and you have a vision, you have a mission, and so I really just went on. A tour around the country, 28 cities, paid for by myself, sharing the message in the book. And then it started to spread word of mouth, one person at a time. And here we are now, seven, eight years later, you know, and the book is actually more popular than ever. It outsells all my other books combined. So it's the most popular book I've written. And yet it was the first book I wrote. Which which says something. I, I don't think I'll... As- I don't think that many people know how many books come out on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. We talk about all the time on this show that there might be 150 to 300 on entrepreneurship alone. And, and for a book to last the time, I mean, to me, seven, eight years, isn't that long, but in tech and books and media and those different kinds of things, that's a lifetime. Now there's so many books that came out. I mean, there's literally millions of books that came out in that time. So for it still to be doing well, it tells you something. So it's pretty exciting. I, I can't explain it, but it really is exciting to that. And it continues to spread word of mouth, you know, one person at a time. And, you know, you meet people, no one, uh, you know, I meet people all the time. No one knows who I am. Right. Mm. Sometimes I don't even know who I am, but, <laughs> but, 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 you know, so, so, and it's exciting to say, Hey, you know, so many people have never even heard of this book, and yet, you know, almost a million people have read it. So the yeah. fact that that means that so many more can read it going forward, that's really exciting. Yeah, absolutely. So, John, we're going to move quickly, but we're here to cover the top questions that our listeners slash future reader of your book would like to get answered. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing The Energy Bus? Well, I was walking one day and honestly praying and struggling in my own life, and the idea just came to me. The idea of a bus driver who inspires their passenger to change their life and to become a better leader at work, boom, just came to me. And I wrote the book in about three and a half weeks of pure inspiration. Hmm. So what makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? Well, I think the fact that it's a fable, it's a story, and it was one of those first books to really talk about you know, the importance of positivity, positive energy overcoming negativity. It deals with people I call energy vampires and how we have to make sure that we deal with those vampires in order to be successful, in order to build a 
a strong and committed and connected and powerful organization, you you have to make sure you weed the negative as well as feed the positive. So, John, I think we already know the the answer to this next question, but I like I, I like to ask it anyway and not assume. And this was actually David Allen of Getting Things Done suggested that I put this question in, and it's how do you suggest the reader engage with your book? Is this one they can jump in and jump out, grabbing information, or was it really designed to be read from front to back? Well, a lot of people say they read it from front to back, and you could read it literally in a day, maybe even two. And then after you read it, there's actually an action plan at the end of the book. Go through that action plan and then ask yourself some important questions like, how's my positive energy? Am I sharing with others? Am I allowing negative people to sabotage my energy? What's my purpose? Why do I do what I do? What will drive me to be my best every single day? And I think if you read it first, enjoy it, and then go back and say, okay, what can I really pull out of this? What do I need? What do I want to focus on in my life? That's a great way to engage with the book. And you know what? That's a great question. Now that we know the purpose and the background behind the book, let's take a deep dive into the content. So we take the next couple of minutes and really allow uh, the future reader to know what they're going to get out of your book. Sure, sure. Well, it's 10 rules for the ride of your life. It's about a guy named George who's miserable and negative. His team at work is in disarray. He has problems at home. He wakes up Monday morning to a flat tire, and he has this important meeting to get to, so he has to take the bus to work. And he gets on the bus, and he needs joy the bus driver. She calls him sugar, and she had a cast of characters teaching the 10 rules for the ride of his life that not only help him become a more positive leader, but a better father, a better husband. It's about getting his team on the bus and moving in the right direction with a shared vision, focus, and purpose. So throughout the story then, he's learning these 10 rules, and then he's applying it to his business, to his life, to his work. Like the first rule, you're the driver of your bus. You choose the kind of ride it's going to be. You choose whether it's going to be a positive ride or the negative ride. And, and how you see the world and your perspective and how you focus on it. And then having a vision every day. That's the second rule. Desire, vision, and focus move the bus in the right direction, right? And having a vision of where you want to go as the driver helps you take on the challenges that you face. So John, if the reader can only take away one concept principle or action item out of your entire book, what would you personally want that to be? I would want that to be this little story. In the book, I talk about a man who goes to the village to speak to the wise man. He says to the wise man, I feel like there are two dogs inside me. I have this positive, kind, and generous dog, and then I have this mean-spirited, angry, negative dog, and they fight all the time. I don't know who's going to win. And the wise man thinks for a moment and says, I know who's going to win, the one you feed the most. Mm -hmm. So feed the positive dog. And I would want the reader to know that every day you have a choice to fuel your ride with positive energy or negative energy. And that every day, the more you feed that positive dog, the more you fuel your ride with positive energy, the more you'll be able to take on the challenges of the world. That optimism is a competitive advantage. That positivity is a game changer. And this is not Pollyanna. You know, I've, I've worked with professional sports teams, NFL teams, NBA teams, Fortune 500 companies, school districts. I have seen firsthand how positive leaders and positive teams, how they outperform negative teams, how a positive culture, positive environment with committed, optimistic people changes everything. So I've seen organizations go from negative to positive. And I would want them to take that away that, you know what, this is real. Feeding the positive makes a difference. And then when you have negativity, you have to confront it, you have to deal with it, and you don't allow that negativity to sabotage your team. So, John, do you have a favorite quote, passage, or even a uh, short story? I mean, you just gave us one with the two dogs that, that I absolutely love, but uh, uh, what's a favorite quote from your book? Well, that's a good question. There's a lot of quotes that I often share from it, but I would say um, the goal in life is to live young, have fun and arrive at our final destination, we know what that is, right? Mm -hmm. As late as possible. Because <laughs> the goal is to enjoy the ride. I think you know, we, we, we talk about life and uh, being an entrepreneur. You know what? You got to have fun. I mean, you really should be having fun working hard. You have to work hard, but it doesn't have to be hard. Mm -hmm. Have fun. That's I call it three Fs. You know, you got fun, then you got faith. Faith is where you expect great things to happen every day. And then there's fearless. You don't worry about the outcome. You're giving your best in the moment. You're not reckless, but you're fearless. You're going for it as an entrepreneur. You're being optimistic. You're being fearless. You're making it happen. You're, you're creating a brighter and better future. You're believing in that future. While other people say it can't be done, you believe it can. And so those three together allow you to truly enjoy the ride. 
Excellent. So John, most of our, most of our listeners are, are mobile right now. So we'll go ahead and put a lot of that down so they can go back and reflect on it in the, uh, in the show notes at the EL And, and this next question I have to ask, obviously we're a book centric podcast and, and everyone wants to know as an, as an author, if there's only one book you could recommend to our listeners based on the way it's impacted your life, created a, a paradigm or a lifestyle shift, what book would that be? You know, people ask me that all the time. It's not been one book that has had an impact on me. It's been many, but I would have to say one book that really changed my life was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm. In reading that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I had started out as an entrepreneur. Then I went to go work for a company. Then I read that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was like, you know what? I always enjoy being my own boss more than anything. That I want to create opportunity. I want to create business. I don't want to create income. I want to create a business. And I started to think about what I love to do and what I wanted to build. And I realized I wanted to write. I wanted to speak. I wanted to make a difference. That if I had to do anything, it would be to do this kind of work and, and to try to impact others. And I said, that's it. I'm going to create a company that does that. I'm going to impact people in this world. So Rich Dad Poor Dad was actually the inspiration and the mm-hmm. precursor for me doing the work that I do now. I absolutely love that book. And I wish that I would have learned the four quadrants when I was in about middle school instead of when I was, you know, 21 or 22 years old. Right. Uh, fantastic book. So, John, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to not only get more information on you, but also on your book, The Energy Bus? Sure, sure. They can go to uh, my website, johngordon.com, J O N Gordon.com. I'm on Twitter at J O N Gordon11 at J-O-N Gordon 11, which a lot of people engage with me there. And, um, you know, any, just, just Google the energy bus or Google me and, and all my info comes up. John, thank you so much for coming on again and sharing, uh, sharing the energy bus with us. Well, it's been my honor and, uh, and pleasure. And, and just thanks for the, for the listeners to listen to this. And I hope if they read the book, I hope it uh, inspires them. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like more information on John or his book, The Energy Bus, just check out the show notes at the elpodcast.com. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.